Good evening, everybody. I'm Rob Landers, a uh, tech lead at Function International. Um, previously, uh, well, you can see some of the things, other things I work on um, or have worked on and a sailboat. And you might be wondering what these things have in common. Um, well, funny story, I uh, wanted to go to the Caribbean and I decided to take the long way. And so I bought a sailboat and decided to start up hop. And uh, it was really cool. I never made it to the Caribbean. As you can see, I'm standing right here. Um, but one of the most interesting things I learned along the way is that most technical challenges are probably not unique. Instead, it's the application of those challenges that makes our products unique. And most importantly, I also saw a lot of problems uh, in a lot of products that were made over and over again from company to company, library to library, framework to framework. And so I wanted to share those problems with you and their solutions. And one of the biggest problems is that every application basically starts like this. You say, okay, I need a database. I'm gonna throw an API on that. And then I'm gonna have an app. And then someone comes along and says, hey, I need it to respond in like 0.1 milliseconds. So you throw a cache and maybe a search index. And then your application developers also throw a cache on there. So you no longer have a single source of truth. I hate to tell you, you now have multiple sources of truth. And so that's what we're going to be talking about, is how do we handle multiple sources of truth in our applications and our APIs. Uh, but before we do that, we have to ask, what is truth? Um, if you look it up in the dictionary, uh, you got a wild, juice, a wild goose chase in front of you. Um, because if you look up truth, it's going to tell you that it is the quality of being true. And that's kind of circular in my opinion. But so then you look up what is true and it says not false. So you go and say, okay, well, what is false? And you see kind of a long explanation that basically says not real. So I don't know why the dictionary decided to do this. They could have just said truth uh, means the quality of not being real, but it is what it is. I think it was a joke played millennia ago or something. But truth is also kind of nebulous, right? Because it just says not real. So what color is the sky? And if you answer any of these colors, you're right. Somewhere on the planet, it's one of those colors right now. And so we can kind of realize that truth is actually relative. It depends on where you're standing and what you believe to be your truth, which is most of the time our eyeballs when we're asking what color the sky is. So that brings us to the two hardest problems in software engineering. Uh, naming things, caching things, and off by one errors. We're only gonna be talking about caching things. I really can't help you with the others, sorry. So back to our single source of, tr source of truth. Most people will argue that the database is their source of truth. It could also be your cache. Um, and in some cases, even your search index for some reason, seen it. Um, and so we're gonna kind of explore how we manage our source of truth. And by, we're gonna cover three basic rules for managing sources of truth. The first rule is always update or evict after commit. And to kind of show how this is a problem, we're going to imagine an app that tells an API that an elephant is a mammal. It's gonna call the API. The API is going to start a transaction right into the database that an elephant is a mammal. Then we're gonna update our cache. And now in our cache, it says that an elephant is a mammal. And we're gonna pause time here. Time is completely paused. Rewind a few milliseconds and jump over to a client asking what is an elephant? It's gonna call the API. It's going to ask our cache and our cache is going to say it's a mammal. Uh, our database is null because that 
other transaction that is in progress right now has updated the cache and given us a window into our transaction. And this happens a lot in libraries and frameworks, uh, particularly um, because it's open source software. No nothing wrong with open source software. I love open source software. But most of these frameworks and libraries are not meant for the scale in which you see these kind of problems. This typically starts biting you once you hit about 100 requests per second. So, well, you can say, OK, well, why don't I just evict it? Right? Instead of updating the cache, I can just evict the cache, right? So we'll send an API request. It'll update our database with an elephant is a mammal, and we'll evict the cache. No big deal. We'll pause time, go to another request. What is an elephant? Call our cache. Nothing in there, right? So now we ask the database, and in this case, just for uh, giggles, it's an animal now. And so now we'll update our cache so we don't have to do a query again. However, in our transaction that just committed, we have wrote mammal. So now we have inconsistencies. Our cache says it's an animal. An elephant says, or our database says it's a mammal. So basically, we always want to make sure that we evict or set after we've committed. The Caches and indexes are a projection of our source of truth. We shouldn't treat them as our source of truth. And always remember, though, lag behind reality. They'll never be 100% consistent because once you're building with caches and databases and all these things, you have built a distributed system. And in distributed systems, nothing's atomic. So now we'll go to our second rule of truth, which is optimistic concurrency control. Because even though we might commit or write to our cache after our commit, we have another bug. So we'll come back to here, and we will do our API request, which we will call our database. We have now changed it so that we're writing a version into our database. It's probably the same row in implementation details. But now we have a mammal, and somewhere on that row it says it's a v2. And now we update our cache, and we see that it is v3, which is not v2. It's not what we just wrote. I think I changed this. Didn't notice. All right. Now we'll make another call. Oh, yeah, OK. I remember what I was going to say. OK, sorry, my bad. So now we are going to overwrite in our cache a later transaction because we can commit while and then race to update uh, v3. So what we have to do is do our API call again. But this time, we're going to use a cache feature called compare and swap, or check and set. And we can basically evict or not based off of whatever we're doing. And what compare and swap, what I mean by that is you read from your cache, you apply any rules, like say version is less than or equal to the current version. We, if we fail, we bail out of our algorithm and go do something else. If it's successful, we do a compare and swap on our cache. And if we fail, we retry. We go back and we say, OK, now is it what we expect? And for those that don't know, a compare and swap is basically the only atomic option you really have to update a value in a cache. It's that it basically allows us to say, is this, before you update the value in the cache, is the value in the cache what I expect it to be? So in other words, if we were to tell the cache, only update this value if it's a v2, never if it's a v3 or a v1 or anything different from what we expect. You're, if you've worked with APIs, you probably also know this is like e tags. It's very similar. So always use compare and swap in your caches. Uh, it's the only way to get anywhere close to atomic and never, ever blindly set a value in a cache. 
The third rule of truth is design for eventual consistency. This is not a very complicated thing when you're building an, an API. It's basically just recognize that whenever you get a value from the cache, it may not be the actual value in the database. It might be lagging behind by a few milliseconds or a few hundred milliseconds or whatever. 99.9% .9 of the time, we don't need to worry about that, but it's something that you need to be aware of when you're designing your data access. So that's basically it.